Okay, so, uh, hey everyone, it's currently, it's pretty late, it's 2 a.m. here. Um, I just felt like doing a random update video. So, um, I haven't been doing a lot of updates lately, um, probably in a week or two. I haven't decided the date yet because I have to check my competition schedule. Uh, let's do that right now, actually. Um, but depending on... Uh, where or when my my competitions are I uh, will be going up to New York and uh, if you can remember okay May I have a comp next week oh I have a comp in Indiana the week after well if I had to choose between the two I'm going to Indiana so like I go to Indiana competitions because I went there once in 2013 and it was really 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 good vibes um, and then every time I went to an Indiana comp, I would PB in something. And every time, Indiana is just a really good place for cubing. Like Indiana, Midwest fam, you guys are great. So if I had to choose between that and a comp in the South, please, I am miss me with that. It's so like it's in the freaking the the snitch, the freaking. I didn't even do anything. Okay, if you were at Wolfpack Winter and you can remember this, I go to New York. Or maybe I can make it both. We'll see. Um, or maybe I can, like, fly from... Or maybe I can fly from New York to Indiana. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'll fly from New York to Indiana. I might go to that comp. And then I'm going to go from Indiana to Atlanta. Um, all right. So maybe I'll go to the southern comp, maybe not, but um, if you can remember the angstrom square one, um, the magnetic one, then we're going to bring that back, but even better. So the cool thing about the version 2 is a lot of people messaged me about the edges breaking. Um, I don't have one on hand, but I'll do another video when I have it. Um, I'm going to have plastic parts that have better edges so the edges that come with the angstrom v2 square one it, maybe that's extraneous but the square ones we're gonna bring it back and we're gonna do it better these edges will resist breaking um, the magnets will be held in even better the quality will be more consistent and I'm experimenting different ways to get engraved logos better so the problem with engraved logos right now is like it's inaccurate and it's like sometimes I mess up and every time I mess up that's like a whole cube that needs to be redone and that's not good and the amount of losses were just unacceptable so I need to find a better way to engrave them and I have a few ideas and That was a con. Maybe I'll just talk and do this. Um, so engravings are probably coming back soon. I'll see if have to see about that. Um, but I'm gonna go up to New York and we're gonna start production on the magnetic square ones. Hopefully, um, magnetic mega minxes are gonna be a little delayed. I'll bring those back too when I come up to New York. So expect that in a few weeks. Um, so right now, what I'm working on is coatings, and new coatings, better coatings, new ways of coatings. You can expect some ridiculous coating stuff in the coming months. So, um, let me explain why this is taking so long. So, if you, some of you have taken statistics, or probability and stuff, discrete mathematics, all that stuff, um, It's not just as simple as reading a book and doing it, as I've quickly found out. So I'm working on new blends, new ways of doing it, but the combinations and permutations between all of these. So let's just l have a look at the known polymers in, like, human knowledge. Let's just pull up Wikipedia and let's Google search something like uh, Wikipedia let's do a sample polymer polymethyl methacrylate PMMA so um, just pulling up PMMA polymer 
just I'm gonna just scroll down just to see like uh well that didn't help. PMMA is a family of the acrylates. And just by looking at the acrylates, you can see that there are so many links and there are so many polymers, and each polymer is composed of multiple monomers as well as additives. So in uh, the news you'll probably not even just the news, but like if you look at like the grocery stores and you look at um, plastic bottles, um, plastic bottles they often say there's no BPA. BPA stands for bisphenol A, um, and BPA is a plasticizer. So plastic and polymers often have a lot of side compounds that change the way the polymer acts. So let's just say conservatively there are 50 polymers, which there aren't. There are way, way, way more. And there are additives, and then there's extra secret things that are in the process. Um, so basically, if you have an infinite number of ways to combine these 50 polymers and do the multiple ways, say, if you're going to coat it in... you have, Let's say you have three ways of coating it, conservatively speaking. There's more than that. Um, this is a video... It's hard for me to make a video without giving too many secrets away, because trade secrets are important. Um, but conservatively, if we say that there are 50 polymers to play with, that's 50 factorial easily. Now, if, you're, if you eliminate, like, the ones, it'll be 50 factorial over something factorial, or, like, 50 choose 3. So let's just, uh, let's just do that, 50 choose 3. If you uh, remember statistics, that's saying a combination of 3 out of the set of 50. If you just made a combination of three polymers out of the 50 monomers even of the 50 you have that's a 19,600 combinations let me make this big um, I should have made it bigger earlier um, so let's say what if we made a combination of four polymers 50 choose four balloons up to 230,000 combinations now there are a lot of different ways the number is pretty big and obviously I'm not I'm not gonna go through that many combinations because in college I learned what works what might work and what doesn't work and it's being narrowed down but I'm still looking at around a few hundred combinations that have to be done so um, for those of you who are lucky enough to get the angstrom polymer blend we're I'm looking at things that are beyond the polymer blend. So this is an example of just a test cube. Um, there are a lot of tests being done, a lot of experimental polymers, and progress is coming by pretty fast. Like, if we had to think about generations of polymers, by the time this is released, it's going to go through like four or five generations. So the end product, whenever it comes out, it's going to be really, really good. I'm going to ensure that the end product the customer is going to be happy with what they're getting. Um, but, um, what else is there to say? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what I'm working on. Um, I think some people contracted me to do some personal stuff. I remember I had to do some lavender cubes, a purple cube. Um, for all of these projects, I finished my finals last week, so now I have a whole month to just work on projects, do research, and do all that stuff. Um, I have a few comps, I'm going to New York, but cubicle projects always come first. So if I'm behind or I forgot about you, just send me another message and I'll, I'll try to get to it this month. Um, in June and July, I have to take summer classes and I'm taking a crazy summer schedule like I'm taking 4.5 classes the point five is a free class but I'm basically because I have so many credits from my first undergrad degree um, I'm basically taking every single CS course in the sophomore year in one summer then I'm gonna take all the junior year courses in fall and spring and then I round everything off in summer so I'll be back in cubicle next year which is pretty darn crazy that I'm graduating that fast 
but I have one month off to just catch up on work, do projects, and we've got a big surprise coming out in April, August. Right around Nats, I'm going to give a seminar about Project Argentum, which is probably my greatest work. Um, so yep, that should do it for project updates. Um, this is just a test scans, and I hope I didn't give too many details away, and that's basically it. That's why it's taking me so long to do the thing that I'm doing, and yep, that's basically it. I wasn't even paying attention I got that 10. Let's see if I can get some good time. So. I've been using the stickerless fusion. Actually, let's make this video a little longer. Let's talk about Yushin as a company and why I think that they're finally getting their stuff together. So, let's talk a little bit about cubing history. So, a while ago, like two years, no, three years, it was 2015, um, people weren't that good at 505. Like, they were pretty good. And there were some people who were like really good, but when the Yushin 505 came out, times just dropped. Like people were getting into 505, and times plummeted. Um, like if you can remember when the Chi Yi Square one came out, times dropped like crazy back then. And like before that, times weren't that crazy. So I don't know if people give it enough credit, but the Chi and uh, the Chi, the Yushin 5 was a big leap, and then Colin Burns set the world record on the Yushin. I'm um, not Yushin. I mean Yuxin. Um, three by three, and then after that, Yuxin didn't make a good three by three for a while, and then they started doing a whole bunch of blunders. So. If you can remember Yushin Blue, I used the Yushin Blue for a while. I really liked its speed and its size, but the whole thing but the Yushin Blue was you needed to spring swap it. And it was really dumb on Yushin's part that so many of their puzzles were really good, but they had bad springs. So 6x6, 5x5, their 7x7 was pretty good, but the caps were dumb and you couldn't put magnets in it. Each one of their puzzles were crippled by something stupid and it was just an oversight or maybe they just didn't have the vision and that's why Yushin puzzles haven't been as big and basically I think Chi Yi had the best cubes for 4x4, 5x5 Wu uh, Hua was okay, I prefer the Yushin but like big cubes was Chi Yi's playground just because Yushin didn't like have the right springs, um, but that was a sub ten. I I'm pretty sure Yushin is gonna turn it around because the Huang Long is pretty good. It it's a little lock uppy, but I like it uh, for the speed. Um, I'm gonna say that Yushin seven by seven. It's broken world records so far, like multiple world records. Yushin's getting their stuff together, and their cubes are getting pretty good. I'm going to say that Yushin's going to be a big player again, and rightfully so. I think they're finally getting, like, they're figuring out which springs to use, they're figuring out the best hardware, and the idea with, like, the ball bearings, that's some good stuff. I really look forward to what Yushin has in the future, and I predict that it's going to be a toss-up, um, well, for big cubes, um, between Yushin big cubes. Definitely keep an eye out for Yushin products in the future. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, once I make, once I have all of the Square One stuff together, I'll probably make a video on that. Um, until then, guys, talk to you next time.